So it's time for another preview, Wrexham versus Barnes in the Vanarama National League at the Racecourse Ground. Last time both teams were out at the Racecourse Ground, it did finish Wrexham 6, Barnet 0, which was a very convincing win for Wrexham on this match day last season. Now, if you are new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe and tap that bell for more notifications as and when they upload. And who do you think will win? Let me know in the comments section down below. But for now, let's move on into the Vanarama National League table. So moving on into the Vanarama National League table, we do have Wrexham wearing first, but they are now in second place on 26 points with a plus 21 goal difference. Also worth noting that Wrexham are unbeaten at home this season, whereas Barnett are in 11th place on 17 points with a goal difference of minus three. So already looking at the table and the little statistic I've given you for Wrexham, who do you think will win tomorrow's game? Let me know in the comments section down below. But for now, let's move on to the Vanarama National League Golden Boot standings. So moving on into the Vanarama National League Golden Boot standings, we do have Macaulay Langstaff from Notts County still running away with it on... You know, tops the golden boot standings on 15 goals. We've got James McShane from Dorking Wanderers in second place on 10 goals. We've got Paul Mullen from Wrexham in third place on 9 goals, which puts Rhys Brown from Wildstone, Andrew Dallas from Solihull Moors, Ollie Palmer from Wrexham, and Nicky Kabambet from Barnet all joint fourth on 7 goals, which puts Alex Reid from Solihull Moors, Adam Marriott from Bromley, and Linnell John Lewis from York City, all in joint 8th position on 6 goals so far this season. Do you think Macaulay Langstaff has run away with the Golden Boot so far? And do you think it's certain for him to win it? Or do you think there will be a surprise contender for this season's Vanarama National League Golden Boot? Let me know in the comments section down below. But for now, it's time to move on to the history between Wrexham and Barnet. So moving on into the history between Wrexham and Barnet, we'll start off with when they were founded, which was Wrexham were founded in 1864, whereas Barnet were founded in 1888. The nicknames for Wrexham is the Dragons, whereas Barnet are known as the Bees. Where is the game being played? Well, it's being played at the racecourse ground with a capacity of 10,771. And where did both teams finish last season? Well, Wrexham finished in second place, just missing out in the playoffs. Whereas Barnet finished 18th in the Vanarama National League. What's everyone's thoughts on this preview so far? Let me know in the comments section down below. But now it's time to meet the managers and the owners of both Wrexham and Barnet. So now it's time to meet the managers and the owners of both Wrexham and Barnet. We'll start off with the managers, Wrexham's being none other than Phil Parkinson, whereas Barnett is Dean Brennan. Now it's time to meet the owners, Wrexham's owners being none other than the American duo in Ryan Reynolds and the Rob McElhenney, whereas Barnett is Anthony Kleinthaus. I think that's how you pronounce his name anyway. If I butcher his name, I can only apologise. But yeah, that's just... Briefly meeting the managers and the owners of both Wrexham and Barnet. So now it's time to kick off into this preview and introduce the head-to-head -head stats between Wrexham and Barnet. So the head-to-head -head stats between both Wrexham and Barnet show as follows. Wrexham beating Barnet and numerous times being nine times that is, with five draws being there altogether between both sides, with Barnet only beating Wrexham three times in the history of the head-to-head -head stats from what I've researched anyway. So what's everyone's thoughts on Wrexham and Barnet with the fact that Wrexham are unbeaten at home this season, the fact that Wrexham are beaten Barnet nine times and the fact that Barnet have only beaten Wrexham three times, is it a certainty for Wrexham to win? Can there be a response from Tuesday night's game? There's plenty of questions that can be asked, but for now it's time to introduce the opposition in Barnet. So now it's time to introduce the opposition in Barnet, currently 11th in the Vanarama National League. Summer signings being Nicky Kabamba from Northampton, 
Laurie Walker from Stevenage, Dominic Revan from Aston Villa, Connor Smith from Boreham Wood, Jamar Lozer and Musa Diara from Woking, Dale Gorman from Yeovil Town, Danny Collins from Dover Athletic, Jerome Akimo from Wildstone, Sean Shields from Weymouth, Harry Pritchard from Eastleigh, Michael Phillips from Maidstone, Idris Carning from Peterborough, Ben Winter from Torquay United and Marvin Armstrong from Worthing. Some of our being Ben Richards Everton going to Yeovil Town, Harry Taylor and Wesley Fonguk going to Southend United, Adam Marriott going to Bromley, Antonis Vlasiu going to Wingate FC, Efron Mason Clark going to Peterborough, Sam Woods and Kean Flanagan going to Cheshunt on loan, Louis Walsh and Eamon Azazi going to Beaconsfield on loan, Sam Granville going to Bedford and being released as Teddy Howe, Joe Witherson and Jake Askew. Last result being a 4-3 win versus Maidstone and the one to watch being none other than their top goal scorer in Nicky Kabamba. But yeah, we normally do try and find the correspondence to introduce their own predicted lineup. However, that has not been able to be done. So I've gone ahead and predicted the lineup for myself. So what is my predicted Barnet lineup to face Wrexham? Well, stay tuned because I'll just be introducing that in just a second. So moving on into my predicted Barnet lineup to face Wrexham. I've gone for the 4 2 3 1 formation. And if anybody knows, that is the formation the Barnet used for when they beat Maidstone 4 3. We've got Walker in goal. We've gone for the back four with Winter at right back. We've got Phillips and Diara centre halves with Okimo left back, which puts Gorman and Pritchard as the holding midfielders. With D Haviland on the right, Idris Carno on the left with Hall at the centre attack of midfield, which puts none other than top goal scorer Nicky Kabambe up front. Now, if anyone does know, this is the lineup that, how can I put it, Barnett used for when they beat Maidstone. So, can you see them changing from a winning side? In my opinion, the answer is no, unless injuries specify otherwise. What's everyone's thoughts on that Barnet lineup? Let me know in the comments section down below. But for now, it's time to introduce the hosts in Wrexham. So now it's time to introduce the hosts in Wrexham, currently second in the Vanarama National League. Summer signings being Elliot Lee, Mark Howard, Jordan Tunnicliffe, Anthony Ford, Sam Dolby, Jacob Mendy, Rory Watson, and Kai Calderbank Park. Also worth noting that Kai Evans did get promoted through the academy. Some outgoings being Sean Brisley to Buxton, Queen Thomas to Sutton United, Dowd Shapaniak to Flint Town, Dan Jarvis to Gateshead, Jordan Ponticelli to Kingsland Town, Dior Angus to Harrogate Town, Tyler French to Dundee FC, and Jake Hyde going out on loan to Southend United. Being released also is Lee Camp, David Jones, Cameron Green, and Devontae Redmond. Last result being a 1-0 loss, away from home at Meadow Lane to Notts County and what was an absolute phenomenal game and it did showcase two phenomenons of the National League and the one to watch being then someone who I expect to start anyway in Elliot Lee. Now, this week, we only have myself and Tommy Cause with predicted Wrexham lineups as Rob Ryan Red is unavailable this week. So let's start off with my predicted Wrexham lineup. And then we'll move on to Tommy Causer's predicted Wrexham lineup. So moving on into my predicted Wrexham lineup. Now, as you can see on screen, I've made a couple of changes personally. Now I've gone for the same formation, so that has not changed. But I've gone for Mark Howard in goal. A back three of Hayden, Tozer and Jordan Tunnicliffe coming in for Max Hluworth, in my opinion. I've got Anthony Ford, right wing back. With Callum McFadden, left wing back, which puts James Jones and Luke Young in that central midfield spot. In the centre attack and midfield position is another change. I've put took out Jordan Davis for Elliot Lee, which leaves Paul Mullen and Ollie Palmer up front. Now, reason why for these changes, I think we're at this time and period now, where if you look at it, if the changes aren't going to happen on Saturday, it'll happen 
next week in the FA Cup clash between Blythe Spartans and Wrexham. But I think now's the time where Parking needs to utilise the squad depth and start making changes. So hence why I've gone for the more experienced Jordan Tonnicliffe over Max Cleworth and I've gone for Elliot Lee over Jordan Davis. What does everyone think about this Wrexham lineup? Let me know in the comments section down below. But for now, we'll see if Tommy Calls agrees with me or if he's chosen a different Wrexham lineup to face Barnet. So moving on into Tommy Calls' predicted Wrexham lineup. But let's start off with his one to watch, which is none other than Elliot Lee. He's gone for Mark Howard in goal. He's stuck with the same back three that was against Notts County in Aaron Hayden, Ben Tozer, Max Cleworth. Whereas he's got Anthony Ford, the right wing back, Callum McFadden, left wing back. Whereas he's got James Jones and Luke Young in that centre midfield position. And he's gone for the one change, which he's took out Jordan Davis for Elliot Lee, which leaves Paul Mullen and Ollie Palmer up front. Now, Tommy's chosen Cleworth, whereas I've jo chosen Jordan Tonicliffe. And it's absolutely crazy to see, to be honest. But yeah, it's one of them. He's stuck with Clue Wave. I've made the change. I personally believe there should be more changes being made now. The McAlinden should be involved more. You know, Harry Lennon, I think, what's the point in having him on contract if he's not going to be playing? But I can see him more featuring against Blythe Spartans than anything. You know, there's players in that team now where it needs to start chopping and changing a little bit. Maybe Sam Dolby might even deserve a chance. Who knows? But yeah, that's my thoughts on that. But let's move on into my score prediction for Wrexham versus Barnet. So moving into my score prediction between Wrexham and Barnet at the racecourse ground. It's none other than Wrexham 4, Barnet 1. Now don't get me wrong. I do think Wrexham will absolutely destroy Barnet in terms of the way they're playing and stuff like that. But let's put it this way. Wrexham is Wrexham and... Wrexham will do the most Wrexham thing and probably concede, in my eyes, to none of it, the Nicky Kabamba. I think that he's going to be the man who will end up scoring for Barnet. And if I was to go for Wrexham goals, let's throw James Jones, Elliot Lee, Paul Mullen and Ollie Palmer. Let's make it a fresh four. Four different scorers. It'd be a nice to see a well-rounded performance from Wrexham now, of course. What's your thoughts on the score prediction? And what would your score prediction be as well? Let me know in the comments section down below. But for now, let's move on into the final piece of this Wrexham versus Barnet preview. So moving on into the last piece of this preview. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody for watching. If you have enjoyed the previews and everything like that so far this season, make sure you like, subscribe and tap that bell for more notifications for as and when I do upload. Also, moving on to next week as well, just a bit of an update on the FA Cup game between Blythe Spartans and Wrexham. There will be a preview for that, so nothing changes. Everything's normal, so there'll be like the match day vlogs and everything like that. I think the match reactions will be coming back at some point as well. Want to get settled in and not having to do like a Tuesday, Saturday, because I think like I'm trying to revert it so the match reactions can be more visible for people to be more interactive and things like that. But yeah, if you are enjoying everything, make sure you smash a thumbs up on this and subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. But until next time, guys, I shall see you on the Wrexham versus Barnet match day vlog tomorrow.